Hi, this is a Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Sunday, July 30th, 2017. Looking at fire potential impacts over the next few days, uh, for today we are looking at scattered showers and wet thunderstorms across the area on the map highlighted in green. Um, again, most of these storms will be wet. And then as we move into Monday, and going through Thursday, drier air, drier weather will move from west to east across the Great Basin, uh, and as a result, we will see some decreasing shower and thunderstorm activity. We are expecting record heat, really dry relative humidities, and high haze most of this week across western Nevada and Idaho. Um, and then as we move through the week, that warming and drying trend will spread further east. Um, also of note, uh, we are expecting lightning to return to the western parts of the area late next week. Over the past 24 hours, a fair amount of precipitation across the southwestern and uh, northwestern parts of the area. Uh, you can see from the image on the right that there was quite a bit of lightning as well across the Great Basin. And if we look at our fire activity map, a pretty light initial attack across the area. We saw 27 new fires. Uh, we have 185 ongoing fires, and we are now down to zero team fires. Looking at precipitation over the past seven days, you can really see how the precipitation mainly has been focused across the southern part of the Great Basin. You can really see those uh, really pretty impressive uh, precipitation totals across portions of southern Nevada, southern Utah, and the Arizona Strip. If we look past 30 days, it's a pretty similar picture with most of the precipitation concentrated across the southern part of our area. So it should be no surprise that our ERCs are the lowest across the southern and southeastern parts of our area where we have seen all of that precipitation. However, across the north, we have really start to see uh, these ERCs increase uh, with many above the 70th um, and even 80th percentile across the area. Looking at the life fuel moisture, uh, it has generally been declining across the Great Basin, mainly across the north. If we look further south, uh, you can see this site in southwestern Utah has had has seen a bit of an increase in the fuel moisture with the uh, cooler, wetter weather. Now looking at the 10-hour fuel moisture, which is a little more representative um, of conditions than the ERCs this year, uh, you can really see that the driest parts of the area are across western Nevada, uh, southern Nevada, and southwestern Idaho. Now uh, this is where we have not seen as much precipitation over the past month, and so these areas really are the driest. And this is of note uh, because we are expecting uh, some really hot and dry weather with high haze indices uh, across western Nevada, southwestern Idaho, moving into uh, the later part of this week. Looking at the satellite this morning, it shows high pressure across the Great Basin. You can see some moisture in the form of clouds across the southeastern part of the area. So for today, again, that moisture in place across the southeastern part of the Great Basin with some drier conditions across the west. Um, and as you would expect with all, the, all of the precipitation, uh, most of Utah, the Arizona Strip, um, is in the green category with the moisture that they have seen. If we look at this in a little more detail, you can see the areas that we are expecting to see those thunderstorms this afternoon. Again, most of these storms will be wet. Uh, relative humidities will be the lowest across the western parts of the Great Basin. As we move into Monday, uh, we keep some of that moisture in place across the southeastern part of the area. We start to see high pressure build across the western part of the Great Basin, and temperatures will begin to climb um, as early as tomorrow. And now looking in a little more detail at Monday, again, showers and thunderstorms across the southeastern part of the area. Not quite as much coverage as we are starting to see that drier air make its way into the western part of the Great Basin. And you can see from the relative humidity forecast here on the right that those RH uh, values are expected to come down a bit uh, in Monday, on Monday afternoon. As we move into Tuesday, that dry air continues to re remain in place across the Great Basin. With building high pressure, we will see temperatures continue to rise. And with that uh, forecast hot uh, weather on Tuesday, we are highlighting the western part of the Great Basin um, for hot and dry conditions as well as high haze indices. And again, looking in a little more detail, by Tuesday afternoon, really the only storms expected across the area will be across uh, southern Nevada, southern Utah, the Arizona Strip, and maybe just a few across southwestern Idaho. Again, really dry relative humidity values across western Nevada on Tuesday. Looking at the three-day precipitation accumulation, um, really nothing too impressive on the map. Again, you can see that the southern part of the Great Basin will see uh, the best chance of precipitation over the next three days. As we move into Wednesday, uh, that high pressure remains in place. We will continue to see 
uh, temperatures climb on Wednesday. And so again, we are highlighting western Nevada for that uh, hot weather on Wednesday. As we move into Thursday, uh, the area that we're highlighting for the heat expands uh, further east as we see that ridge of high pressure continue to build across the Great Basin. On Friday, models begin to hint at some moisture making its way into the northwestern part of the Great Basin. So there really is some concern on Friday with the potential for lightning, particularly following such a hot and dry period. Now, you know, four or five days out, lightning forecasts are not the greatest. So this uh, timing could shift a little bit. We could see the moisture come in a little earlier or a little later. Uh, but there is a concern for some moisture across the western part of the area uh, towards the end of next week. And then finally looking at Saturday, you see that moisture expand across the Great Basin. And so you can see the areas that we are highlighting expand eastward on Saturday. Looking at the seven day precipitation totals, uh, again, greatest precipitation amounts across the southern part of the Great Basin, but perhaps reaching a little further into northern Nevada than we have seen this year. Well, not this year, for a while. <laughs> Finally, in the 8 to 14 day period, the Climate Prediction Center is calling for above normal temperatures across the western part of the area with above average precipitation across the southern parts of the Great Basin. So really, you know, even moving in that 8 to 14 day period, looks like far western Nevada and most of Idaho will continue to be quite dry. So that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Our information is on the screen and you can also find us on Twitter. Thanks.